Now, building an app is difficult, getting people to pay for this app is almost impossible. But there are several different ways in which you can monetize your app. One of them is white labeling, which is what I'm about to hop on a meeting for with a large, I mean large, massive incubator in the US. Let's see how it goes. Great, thank you so much. Have a good one, you too. Bye. Okay, that went pretty well. That was a massive, massive, big equity type of like no equity lending, equity lending, incubator, accelerator type of program and that was massive. I just bought new golf balls, so let's use these as an analogy. These types of golf balls are very generic. They're red, they're soft type of feeling for us, you know, not really great golf players. They are Wilson and they're called the Duo Soft. However, these golf balls do happen to look very similar or pretty much exactly the same as golf balls from Strixon. Now, I don't know if this is the case, but I'm speculating here, so don't take this as fact. But, for example, say that Wilson has a factory, they make golf balls. The Wilson factory has some spare time for production. They therefore rent these production hours out to a company like Strixon who also makes golf balls. So they end up making the exact same ball in the exact same factory using the exact same staff and the same methodologies. But the other golf ball says Strixon, while this golf ball focus, says Wilson. And that happens to be the only difference. So what this means is that Wilson has white labeled their golf ball to be a Strixon. Now, in app development, this can be a pretty good strategy if you have an app that's easily, easily replicable and makes sense in different niches. So for example, a personal training app can be a great example of this. Maybe you have a, for a person, you make for an individual fitness influencer, you make an app where they can sell their programs. This becomes very replicable, so you can sell this to other fitness influencers and you can make this a business. You take the app that you currently have, you take the source code, you take what it looks like and you just redo it all in all in all. This can be a very good strategy because one, you can end up landing pretty high ticket clients. Like the, the people we've spoken to regarding this would probably be charging them somewhere between 20 and 40,000 US dollars to do this. So it becomes quite lucrative. However, it's a one-time cost. And if you're going for a valuation play, i.e. you're trying to get your, get your app valued as much as possible, that's not the play. Second of all, you don't have ownership of all of the customer data or all the customer contact. If you want to send an email to people saying, hey, here's a new feature, you can't really do that. Third of all, it can become quite a short-term play in that you may end up making a lot of short-term thing, but there's no continuous cash flow when these things run out and therefore it's not really maybe not a viable business in the long run but what it can be it can be very high ticket it can be quite easy to land if you do it in a well-established niche that's you know doesn't really have uh, any of these digital platforms it can also lead to maintenance fees so for example you could charge a monthly retainer to maintain this app to update it etc so from that perspective white labeling can be a pretty good business model for your app now there's another one which is individual plans inside of the app which you need to have a good app for, and that's what we're gonna to get to working on now. Let's go. Now, another popular and good way, and probably the most common way to monetize an app, is to do it premium slash freemium, with freemium being something like this. Ah, look at all this cutlery. Now, if I don't pay for the app, maybe, I get to open this whole box and I get to see everything there's in here. There's spatulas, there's cheese graters, there's spoons, there's forks. Maybe they say, hmm, you just get access to the little spoons for free. Oh, and I'm able to see all of the things that this app offers. I'm able to see that it has these butter things. It does have these clips. It has some nice wine bottle openers, but I only, with my particular current plan, only get access to the spoons. But now, these spoons happen to be so good that I assume that everything else in here is going to be great as well. So, I decide to pay for the spoons, the forks, and the knives, which is kind of like a mid version. And maybe, if I like them enough, and if they perform well for me, I will upgrade and I will be able to use the cheese graters and the wine bottle openers. And, and app freemium models work a little bit in the same way. You have a set of features, some which you can use for free, and then you have some more premium features which you charge for. Any real app works like this, 
or not any real app, most apps that make money work like this. So you can take any dating app, for instance, you take any social media app, like you can pay for Instagram without ads, for example, now, but you can also monetize it through ads. Or you take Duolingo, MyFitnessPal, a lot of apps use this freemium version. And let's head back. And this also happens to be how we are monetizing Venture Pals. So Venture Pals, which is here, I'm working on a redesign, as you saw in some of those time lapses here. Venture Pals does have a premium feature, which is where you can go to my subscription and you can subscribe to our contributor plan for free. Now, this is when you get access to some of the more uh, premium things. You get access to unlimited swipes, you get access to past pals, for example, here. You also get access to unlimited swipes here in this uh, this section. So a lot of those things uh, is, uh, is what you get with the, the premium one. And the same applies to other apps. So you can kind of incentivize people to hop on your app by offering something for free. And then you can offer something even better that you charge for. And that's the second way of monetizing an app, in my opinion, uh, freemium. Now, the next way to monetize an app is to create something like a feature inside of the app that only gets access to a particular community. So for example, Clubhouse was a little bit like this. Some of these apps in the US where you can give each other uh, compliments via an app in high school or something like this. And how this works is that I say here, my group consists of 1200 people and each hundred people represented by one of these golf balls. And let's pan this down a little bit. And I tell people that I have this golf ball, 100 people, this golf ball, and this golf ball on here. These are all members of, say, X incubator program, whatever incubator program that may be. I can then say that these people who are part of this, to get access to them, uh, who I'm charging to be in this exclusive group, I'm saying to this next incubator of 300 people, that for your users to get access, you also need to pay me to be part of this particular network. So we have you in there, we have you in there, and we have you in there. And then they're all paying just to be part of that particular network. LinkedIn Premium works a little bit similar. A lot of the enterprise level apps work a little bit similar, where you're invoicing someone, not on the app, but outside of the app, you're invoicing them, uh, for them to get access to particular premium features. It's also something that we have implemented in Venture Pals. So for the incubators and the communities that we have on board, they can go to settings and they can enter an organization code, that, code that's validated here. I don't want to use a real one for YouTube just so people don't join them. But for example, say that I enter one that does not exist, it will validate that and say, no, 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 that's not a valid one. If I enter one that does exist, I get access to this part. Only view people inside of your organization. Now, this becomes a closed community and now this is just an example. As this you saw, this was a made up community. But if I switch this off, I get access to everyone again. So you can kind of use this feature to make a little bit of the app exclusive where only certain people can see certain people. Or maybe if you're part of an incubator or a particular group or a particular network, you're only able to see those particular users inside of the app. And then you can charge for that, making that a little bit of a premium community feel. That's one way of doing it. And the benefits here are, one, it can scale you quite quickly in the beginning. If you get one of these uh, uh, incubators or communities on board, that can be 100, 1,000 people very quickly. But what's negative is that one, the rates don't tend to be that high. Maybe you can monetize half a dollar per month per user maximum, at least for, for my app and for what I've seen. Whereas for the individual subscriptions, you can probably charge a little bit more. So here you need to kind of evaluate what's feasible, what can I do, what's the reasonable rate, and then go from there. But it's quite quick to implement. It's quite easy to sell face to face. Like let's hop on a call and let me sell this to you. It's very direct as opposed to getting people to download the app and relying on an efficient funnel. But this is also something that I can recommend trying out. Now, the last two examples are very self-explanatory and not anything that we're implementing inside of Venture Pal, so that I have really implemented before. But one of them is very simple. It makes a lot of sense. Just like I bought these golf balls, you say, this app cost $9.99. Boom, transaction done, you own the app, you get access to all of the content. This is good if you have an app which will not be continually updated, which does not really rely on any social features, because for some reason social features tend to be associated with more ongoing development, so you pay for it to be continuing being part of that network and that social community. Uh, so for example, think fitness plan apps or like basic software type of apps, etc. So apps which you're more likely to charge for just once. 
And that it can be quite good. One, what's good there is that it's less of a hurdle. It's easier to get people to pay once than to pay for a year, a month, for example. But what's negative there is that you don't have that continuous cash flow. You have a one-time transaction and that user revenue source is dead. It's done for the rest of the lifetime of the app. So you kind of have to weigh that as well. Is this something which you can continue charging for? Then it's definitely better to do a subscription. If this is something that's a one-time value or which will remain very similar for the period of life of that product, then it could be better to do it as a one-time thing because that it's typically easier to get people to pay once as opposed to subscribe to something. So consider that when doing your, uh, when deciding your strategy. Now for the last, or not the last, but one of my recommended ways of monetization, the last example, you can find this anywhere. People want attention and people are willing to pay for attention. You can kind of look in any medium of any kind, whether that's digital, physical. You see half of this magazine, which is meant to be a membership magazine for members of a particular community, it's just ads. Ad. 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 Now they're in Swedish, you're kind of brokeraging attention in that you have eyeballs on your particular app and you want to sell those eyeballs or the attention of those eyeballs to someone else. So someone, you have a marketplace where someone's willing to pay for your users to see something. Maybe that's an ad for a video game, maybe that's an ad for a product, but you have you have that attention and they want to buy that. So you can sell that attention, essentially day, day trading that attention for wherever is popular right now. If you're using a framework like Google Ads, for example, this will be done automatically. And you can monetize your app in this way. What's positive about this is that it's quite easy to do. What's negative about it is that the rates aren't that good if you don't have massive audiences. So for example, think a mobile game where you have a lot of people playing it, but not a lot of people are willing to pay for it, then ads can be a very good option. What's negative about it too is that it's very annoying. I don't think high quality apps really have ads except for, you know, the social media apps where you're kind of seeing an ad integrated, but these ads where you have an app and just pop up and you're like, ah, oh, wait eight seconds. That's not a high quality app. That's not a great app. And definitely consider how annoying you want to be to your audience too, but it can be a very good way to monetize your app in a simple and easy way using existing frameworks. So those are some of the ways if, in which I am monetizing the apps that I have built, mainly being subscription models, white labeling models, close community type of models. So definitely try to consider those. I think personally that they're more simple as well as or the ratio of simplicity and potential payout is the greatest, in my opinion. Ads and payment for the apps works as well, but I find that ads are just annoying and have very low CPM. And just paying for the app as well will be a one-time transaction. It will not provide you with continuous cash flow. But that's how I'm doing it. If you have any other ideas or any tips, please leave them down below in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.